virtual community development in the form of sharing session entitled Pharmacy Student Mental Health and Stress Management. This community development is conducted by collaboration of Faculty of Pharmacy, Airlangga University, Indonesia, Faculty of Pharmacy, University Technology, Mara, Malaysia, and Department of Pharmacy, Faculty of Allied Health Sciences, Daffodil International University, Bangladesh. Ladies and gentlemen, the World Health Organization has defined that health is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. Pharmacy programs are among the hardest programs to be taken not only in one country, but also globally. Many studies show the evidence of mental disorder with different level of severity and various strategy to coping with it. In today's activities, we hope that we can assist students to raise the awareness of mental health issues and recognize the services available, especially in the university, to assist students who need help in mental health issues. My name is Kesnita. I'm a lecturer in the Department of Pharmacy Practice, Faculty of Pharmacy, Arlanga University, and I will be the Master of Ceremony in this event. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to read our schedule today. Our activities will be started by singing the National Anthem of Indonesia, and Unair Song, followed by the video of Ilanga University, University Technology Mara, and Daffodil International University profiles. After that, there will be praise session, and then the sharing session with our three distinguished speakers and discussion. After that, the sharing session among students in the breakout rooms, followed by summary and closing. Ladies and gentlemen, let's open our event today with Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. The next, we will listen or sing the National Anthem of Indonesia. To all participants, please sit or stand together formally and politely. Indonesia Raya. Langa.
Thank you. The next agenda is getting to know with the institutions that organize this event by watching the video profiles of the three universities. For the committee, please play the video. Selamat datang di Fakultas Farmasi Universitas Airlangga. Fakultas Farmasi hadir sebagai fakultas yang ingin mewujudkan mimpi sebagai fakultas yang inovatif. Terkemuka pada tingkat nasional dan internasional, pelopor dalam pengembangan ilmu di bidang sains teknologi kefarmasian dan farmasi klinik komunitas, serta menghasilkan lulusan dengan kompetensi unggul dalam pharmaceutical care berdasarkan moral agama. Di era yang modern ini, farmasi hadir melewati perjalanan setengah abad yang luar biasa dengan menggelar pendidikan akademik dan profesi seperti program studi sarjana, pendidikan apoteker, magister farmasi klinis, magister ilmu farmasi, dan doktor ilmu farmasi mengembangkan sains, pengabdian masyarakat, dan kolaborasi demi terciptanya Smart University. Aktivitas kegiatan pembelajaran mahasiswa Fakultas Farmasi Universitas Erlangga menghasilkan output unggul dibarengi dengan penelitian staf pengajar yang didanai dari hasil joint research dan juga pemerintah. Hibah dana kerjasama dengan mitra luar negeri. Hasilnya beberapa staf pengajar telah memperoleh penghargaan dari DY Price Foundation Amerika Serikat, Kemenristek, Media Nasional, sampai Bakri Award ke-12 di bidang kesehatan. Sementara itu, lebih dari 50 kegiatan pengabdian masyarakat yang dilakukan oleh dosen Fakultas Farmasi Unair per tahunnya. Kegiatan pengmas tersebut meliputi pengmas lokal area wilayah Surabaya. Pengmas regional meliputi area gerbang Kertasusila, bahkan provinsi Jawa Timur. Dan pengmas nasional yang diadakan di seluruh wilayah Indonesia, antara lain Maumere NTT, Lombok, dan Kalimantan Timur. Keunggulan Institusi ditentukan oleh inovasi, implementasi teknologi, dan networking. Fakultas Farmasi mengembangkan program networking akselerasi menuju Smart University dalam mewujudkan Smart University terkait dengan pengembangan networking baik dalam negeri maupun luar negeri seluruh aspek tridharma perguruan tinggi. Fakultas Farmasi Universitas Erlangga terakreditasi unggul Lampetekes terakreditasi internasional ASIN, tersertifikasi ASEAN University Network, terus menjaring mahasiswa internasional dan dosen pengajar berlevel internasional di seluruh aspek Tridharma Perguruan Tinggi. Kolaborasi internasional telah terjalin dengan perguruan tinggi farmasi di seluruh benua Asia, Amerika, Eropa, dan Australia. Kerjasama pendidikan dapat dilihat dari berbagai ekspertis dosen pengajar di seluruh mata ajar, berbagai kemitraan perguruan tinggi, dan lembaga terkait pendidikan. Kerjasama riset ditunjukkan dengan Joint Publication, International Consortium, Asosiasi Profesi Internasional, serta beberapa penghargaan internasional bereputasi yang diperoleh Sivitas Akademika. Produk riset berstandar nasional telah dapat diterima menjadi pilihan masyarakat. Dalam community services, ekspertis dan kepakaran dosen Fakultas Farmasi UNER diakui oleh masyarakat sebagai konsultan dan tenaga ahli. Aktivitas kerjasama Fakultas Farmasi telah memberikan aspek yang signifikan dalam aspek good health and well-being di parameter sustainable development goals. Terus melebarkan sayapnya menjaring networking bersama top 100 world class university farmasi untuk mensejajarkan posisinya di kancah dunia. Farmasi Universitas Erlangga punya daya saing yang diakui dengan keberadaan sumber daya tangible dan intangible resources. Hasilnya, sumber daya mengantarkan mahasiswa meraih prestasi regional, nasional, dan internasional. Ini juga tidak lepas dari dukungan sarana-prasarana sesuai dengan SN Dikti, yaitu telah memiliki peralatan dan media pendidikan, buku, sarana teknologi informasi dan komunikasi, kelas, 
Instrumen eksperimen di lab yang terpusat di gedung Nanizar zaman Junus berlantai 10 di kampus C. Fakultas Farmasi juga melahirkan produk-produk sediaan obat, baik obat tradisional berupa obat herbal, terstandar, maupun formula obat modern. Isolasi dan sintetis nyawa, bahan alam yang telah memperoleh haki, pemenuhan layanan jasa, dan peningkatan pengetahuan masyarakat. Fakultas Farmasi Universitas Airlangga selalu berkomitmen untuk senantiasa memberikan manfaat yang sebesar-besarnya bagi masyarakat melalui pengembangan pendidikan berkualitas, penelitian bermanfaat, dan pengabdian kepada masyarakat melalui kerjasama dengan para stakeholder, perguruan tinggi, rumah sakit, industri farmasi, serta lembaga pemerintahan sebagai wujud keberadaan kami dalam rancangan Smart University. Since establishment in 2002, Daffodil International University persistently strived to impart quality education for producing graduates who can compete for jobs nationally and internationally. It is a preeminent IT-based university in Bangladesh, providing most time befitting and up-to-date education for the benefits of society. Its graduates have already started to achieve success in job markets, fitting themselves for a globalized world. To be a global leader in providing tertiary level education, DIU has five faculties. Faculty of Science and Information Technology, Faculty of Engineering, Faculty of Business and Entrepreneurship, Faculty of Humanities and Social Science, Faculty of Allied Health Science, Research and Innovation, 
DIU lays great emphasis on research and innovation. The fourth industrial revolution has the potential to raise global income levels and improve the quality of life for populations around the world. DIU has established a great technological research atmosphere where teachers and students work on various research projects. Research journals are also regularly published under different faculties. DIU conducts many professional research-based projects under many prominent national and international bodies. Facilities DIU is the first university who has introduced robotic technology for admission counseling. DIU first introduced one student, one laptop in order to create an IT-friendly future generation. Over 30,000 students have already received it. DIU has introduced life insurance policy for students and guardians, financial waiver and scholarship, world-class resourceful library with e-library facilities, boys and girls hostels. Large transport pool well-equipped gymnasium, 6,000-seat auditorium, 100-seat hall with removable electronic writing board, modern media lab, vast playground, attractive canteen, medical center, mosque, golf court, tennis court, basketball court, clubs, residential halls for both students and faculty members automation our campus have full Wi-Fi connectivity to access online facilities we have strong presence in website most of the activities of the university have achieved automation under own ISP where ERP plays a key role and we have moved into a paperless culture campus TV is there to get in touch with university programs anytime anywhere Campus Radio helps to increase interaction and activities among its students and teachers. Every year, Foundation Day is observed in the campus where all students, teachers, officials and alumni gather in a joyous mood. Students have launched Green Campus Movement to keep the environment pollution free. Entrepreneurship Mindset DIU students are nurtured to create jobs for others through entrepreneurship development. They are nurtured to be leaders. DIU already has produced 4,000 entrepreneurs worldwide and established Business Incubator, Entrepreneurs Club, Venture Capital Limited, and Startup Market. It has also opened Bachelor Degree Program of Innovation and Entrepreneurship. Alumni The university takes the pride of its huge alumni network who are leading different organizations locally and also non-resident Daffodil alumni who are working in different countries and contributing to positioning Bangladesh. DIU has established Alumni Association and Non-Resident Daffodil Alumni Association to increase the bonding of alumni clusters. Foreign Students The biggest green campus has been recognized by the green metrics and attracting many international students to study here. Over 650 students come from 10 different countries to study here. Global Academic Linkages The university has established academic linkages with many prestigious universities globally in association with 500 prestigious universities from 50 countries. Global Fitness To provide students with opportunities and achieve global fitness, DIU is always in touch with world organizations. DIU hosts many international programs every year. Participants from Bangladesh and overseas appreciate the environment and facilities for mega events at DIU. Awards and Achievements DIU achieved many important awards for the excellent educational services at the tertiary level.
global ranking. The destination of the university is not only to become a top ranked university but also to produce competent graduates up as per the industry demand. Daffodil International University Fostering Creativity Very fabulous videos for introducing the three universities Universitas Airlangga, University of Technology Mara, and Daffodil International University. Thank you, participants, for watching. Before we start our main agenda, it is better to pray. The praying session will be led by Dr. Andy Hermansia. Please, Dr. Andy. Thank you very much, Bu Kastita. Ladies and gentlemen, let us raise our hands and also pray together. I will lead the pray in Islamic way, and everyone can adjust with the praying. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan al-rajim, bismillahirrahmanirrahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Allahumma salli ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala li sayyidina Muhammad bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin. Allahumma ya Allah, rabbana ya Allah, wa li ikhwanina alladhina sabakuna bil iman, wa la taj'al fi qulubina illa lilladhina rabbana innaka ra'uf rahim. Rabbana ufir lana wa li walidayna warham umma kama rabbayana sagheera. Allahumma barik lana ya Allah fi umrina wa barik lana fi ilmina wa barik lana fi rizkina wa barik lana fi zuriyatina Allahumma aridal haqqa haqqa wa rizqna tibaa wa aridal batila batila wa rizqna tinaba Rabbana hab lana min azwajina wa zuriyatina kurrat ayun wa ja'alna lil muttaqina imama Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana وفي الآخرة حسنة وقينا عذاب النار وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين آمين يا رب العالمين بسير الفاتحة السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته thank you دكتور أندي ladies and gentlemen Entering the main session today, we have Dr. Sharifa Sultana. She is an associate professor from the Faculty of Allied Health Science, Daffodil International University, Bangladesh. Dr. Sultana, nice to meet you this morning. Dr. Sultana, are you with us today? Dr. Sultana is connecting. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we still cannot hear your voice. Is it okay now? Yes, we, yeah, we can hear you clearly now. Uh, okay, Dr. Sultana, if you are ready, the screen is yours. My screen is visible. Uh, I think it's coming. It's still loading. Yes, we can see your screen now. It's okay now. Yes. Uh, we can see your screen. Um, you can make it as a slideshow, please. Is it okay now? I okay, still get thank you. Still loading. I'm sorry. Loading. Yes. Okay, fine. So, very good morning to all of you. And at the beginning, I would like to congratulate University Erlanga for their 59th anniversary. 
and I also welcome the students of Daffodil International University, students of UTIM, and of course the students of Universitas Erlanga, and the beloved colleague of these three university. Assalamu alaikum and very good morning to all of you. Today we are uh, sharing the mental stress of pharmacy students in these three university. Actually, not only for these th three university, we also focused on the students who are under pressure and feeling in stress, anxiety, depression. So I am Dr. Sharifa Sultana, Associate Professor and Associate Head, Department of Pharmacy, Daffodil International University. Actually, I am facing network trouble. Uh, is it okay, everything? Jasnita? Yes, we can hear you, Dr. Sharifa, although there is some noise, but we can still hear you. Okay, thank you. So first of all, what is mental health? All of you know that it, it is the emotional, psychological, and social well-being which determine how you can deal or manage our stress, sadness, anxiety, depression. So it is not expected to any students or anybody uh, to feel sadness, depression, anxiety. We all want to come out from this situation. Otherwise, our life will not be happy. So to get a happy life, we need a good mental health. If you see the scenario of mental health disorder around the world, you find that uh, almost 970 million people are living with mental health disorder, where the number of female is higher than the male. And um, there are so many types of disorder such as anxiety, depression. Uh, Dr. Sultana, I'm sorry, we are still cannot um, see your screen uh, like in a slideshow version. It is not slideshow. Yes. Actually, uh, is it okay now? still the same maybe if you okay. want to try like uh, stop sharing and then try share again okay Actually, my PC is not working. PowerPoint yes. is not responding. Yeah, there's some issues probably. Is it okay now? Can you move to the uh, slideshow version?
Is it okay? Yes, we can see your slideshow. Okay. Yeah, and the slides moving now. I think it's okay now. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So um, uh, again, I uh, moving to the statistics. Uh, there are so many types of disorder we find. Whereas the anxiety disorder is highest position than depression. If you see the whole scenario of the world, we find that around 30% of total population globally affected this mental disorder. And um, the scenario for high income countries is higher rather than the low income countries. So there are so many types of disorder where uh, accidental injury cause is the main reason for becoming the mental disorder state. Now I am focusing on the academic stress. You know, a student passed lots of schedule in a semester, exam pressure, inadequate study facilities, personal inadequacy, peer pressure, parental pressure, and there is some biasness by teacher and long teaching method. So this makes a student puzzle and he or she become stressed and feel anxiety. Due to their stress, they sometimes try to commit suicide also. So this is a challenge for our um, educational area. The student become too much stressed due to their academic pressure. If I focus on the pharmacy student, the academic pressure scenario is higher than the other students, especially the medical students, doctors or pharmacists. They have lots of pressure rather than the uh, students of our background. So they have to face um, their continuous pressure in lab, laboratory work, assignment, presentation. Cardinal more pressure also very vital. And there is another issue, which is the language barrier. All of the curriculum or all of the medi uh, medium of instruction is English. So if we consider their native language, they also feel pressure in the language barrier. And continuously they are pressurized by their um, exam system, midterm, final exam, quiz, and Another pressure, they always feel the result. They try to be, um, do good, uh, ensure good CGPA uh, or uh, becoming uh, first in the exam. That also leads to their uh, stress or anxiety. So uh, my suggestion to the students who join this event, uh, don't, uh, bother you, your result always. Uh, actually, it is a part of education, but result is not the only parameter to assess you. So ensure a good health, you um, maintain a normal CGP, which is okay. Uh, don't need to extra pressure. Job for the higher um, year students, especially the outgoing stu students, job pressure and financial pressure is also another factor. So how can we uh, relieve this situation? I uh, want to show a single video within a minute, uh, which give you the idea how can you cope up this situation. Is it working? I think it's loading. Okay. Actually, I face um, a network issue today. That's why it takes time. Yes. Uh, your slide, uh, move to the next slide. Is there any sound with this video? 
Yes, yes. Should be there sound, yeah. Okay, the uh, I think there is a problem in video, so I skip this slide. I move into the next slide. So actually, uh, in the video, I want to focus uh, how can you prevent this stress and uh, what strategy you have to take. Uh, so here I summarize the point from the video. Um, how can you get the stress-free life? So for ensuring a stress-free life, all students and everybody should take nutritious food or balanced diet. You have to set your smart goal, that means specific, measurable, attainable, and uh, the time-bound you know, realistic goal. Uh, as a result, you can reach your goal properly, which do not lead to frustration or depression. Proper time management also important. And in case of a student, I want to say one thing. You have the tendency to do procrastination. You have to avoid it. You uh, have to do your work just now. And you have to live in present, not past, not future. That give you a positive vibe. Meditation, which also um, boosts your mental health. And of course, exercise, which uh, helps to uh, make you a healthy life. Proper sleep, at least seven hours is required for every human being. So uh, in case of students, you are always busy with media, especially um, smartphone, mobile. You have to avoid this. Be beside this uh, screen, you are trying to focus your uh, sleep, your mental health, your um, exercise and meditation. Uh, another important thing, I think it is required, study break. Students are always uh, uh, study during exam, no break. That also um, uh, hamper your concentration. So one or two minutes or five minutes break is uh, boost your education. Of course, one thing is very important, which is positive thinking. Uh, if you feel you can do anything, you can, uh, of course, you are able to do anything. Otherwise, without positive thinking, you can't success, uh, success in your life. Self-esteem or self-confidence is also important. And lastly, I want to say, say that be optimistic, not pessimistic. If you follow this strategy, of course, you will get a stress-free life and no stress, no anxiety, no depression come into your life. So that's all from my part. Thank you all. Thank you, Jasnita. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Sultana, um, for your brief uh, introduction about what is uh, mental health issues. Uh, You've been raising uh, the awareness of um, the mental health issues for us. Um, maybe uh, a quick discussion for uh, Dr. Sharifa session, uh, because uh, you'll be uh, have another occasion today, right, Dr. Sharifa? Yes. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Uh, any uh, question from audience, maybe, or from other speakers? Yes, oh, Dr. Sultana. Yes, Dr. Andy, please. Dr. Sarifa, uh, it was a very interesting presentation, inspiring presentation as well. Uh, I was just wondering about the uh, the demand when you were studying pharmacy. Is it is also common in, in Daffodil, particularly for the whether there is a discrepancy also between the national, the local, or the international students? Do you see uh, some? Did you have an experience for that? being studying pharmacy, particularly in, in Tefotil or perhaps, I mean, I mean, in other experiences that you like, you have. Okay, thank you, uh, Andy. I think you want to know uh, any case study in my department about mental stress. I'm facing network issue. Uh, actually, due to mm, mental issue, we uh, face some dropout student in each semester. Uh, they can't continue their study. Most of them, they claim that uh, curriculum is too hard for them. 
and uh, lab pressure and uh, the um, assessment process, which is very much pressurized for them. So uh, we have to deal such type of students who drop out only because of their academic pressure. So um, it's very common. And we are also found some international students who face the barrier of language. And uh, they, um, <clears throat> we have some uh, African students and uh, uh, they always uh, um, complain that they are not able to understand English properly and they have the problem to our native language Bangla also. That's why do they become <clears throat> not more interested and the dropout and result become poor. As a result, they become stressed. So we are focusing them who actually uh, less attentive in the class or uh, who are not joining the class regularly. And we have mentor or advisors of each batches. They continuously advise them, counsel them, and address the problem of the students, why they are becoming stressed or what's the reason of their anxiety. We are focusing and uh, try to resolve their uh, situation by proper counseling. We so, have also a, a psychologist in our university. If we feel that the student needs some session of therapy, psychotherapy, in that case, we refer him or her to psychologist. That's great. So just to make sure that everything is, is available to support those who are in need for the mental health issues. I think it's really very good, very interesting one. Thank you, Dr. Sharifa. Yes, thank you, uh, thank you Dr. Sharifa. Uh, maybe uh, one other question from me. Uh, is there any some kind of uh, screening to identify uh, students who has um, high risk for coping with a mental health issues, Dr. Sharifa? Actually, um, screening, which is not, uh, we are focused on screening. We just uh, um, think about their uh, progress, academic progress. If we find any uh, disturbance in their academic background, we, we focus them and finally, uh, sometimes we get that uh, they are feeling in mental disorder. In that case, we uh, address them. Oh, okay. So um, you look at the academic performance and find whether it's um, uh, there is a decrease in their academic performance and then uh, assessing from that uh, issues. Okay. Yes. Uh, yes, thank you. There is one question uh, from... Uh, Dr. Melani, uh, yes, thank you for great presentation. As you have mentioned on your lecture, women are easy to have mental health problems compared to men. Why do you think it can happen? And is it related to the hormonal issue or else? Thank you. Of course, thank you, uh, Dr. Melani. The women are more prone to mental disorder. You know, it is uh, related to hormonal issue. Another factor, women are more serious about their activity. They have to maintain um, their family life. They are, uh, if they are um, job holder, in that case, they have to balance. So the more stress they take than the men. So uh, hormonal issue as well as, you know, the physical barrier of uh, women, uh, she feel always she is uh, in challenged condition. So um, I think that's the reason. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, a, a female, working female has to take more responsibility than the male. As a result, they become more stressed. Yes, I agree with you. There are many many things that in one time a woman need to do, especially when uh, there is uh, other responsibility, working, working mother, and also a student. <laughs> yes, uh, that's well, added more complicated problems. And also um, uh, make the risk for uh, mental health issues uh, become uh, more, become higher. Yeah. 
uh, I invite other question from participants. Any question from participants, maybe from uh, students, you are very welcome to put a question from Dr. Sharifa from Bangladesh. I think we have similar uh, similar culture, maybe uh, Dr. Sharifa in here in Indonesia and Bangladesh, where um, a woman, uh, especially a mother, uh, has many responsibilities uh, in the family and also in the uh, in the so, working. Sorry. Yes. I was out from the. Is there any more question? Oh. Yes. Uh, okay. Um, sorry, there is a technical issues. I think, Dr. Sharifa. Okay. Oh, there are several devices. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, maybe last question, Dr. Sharifa. You mentioned uh, it is a very good suggestion from you that the students need to set their goals. Yeah, uh, measurable goals, uh, whatever that you um, suggest uh, in your slides. Can you suggest more uh, how uh, how to maintain or how to, what do you call that, um, to achieve that, that goal? Maybe you can share some strategies furthermore for this yeah. smart, uh, setting smart goals. Yeah, thank you. Um, I think that, hello? Yes, uh, can you repeat your answer? Because I think it's there is a technical problem. Okay, uh, uh, I suggest a smart goal that is specific, attainable, measurable, and realistic and time bound. So if your goal is specific, you can achieve it easily. That means within a short period of time. In that case, I suggest the students, you have to focus on a small goal, not to a big one. First, you uh, think you have to complete uh, the uh, course properly. You have to do your task. Suppose, uh, daily basis, you focus on your daily work. If you complete your daily work properly, then you can complete your semester work properly. As a result, your result will be increased. So you focused on a small goal, not the big one, which is not attainable in a short period of time. So narrow down your focus or your goal and you can reach it easily. So small achievement give you a large one or big one. As a result, you can reach your goal. Is yeah, Dr. Sharifa. Yes, okay, thank you so much for the answer. Uh, Dr. Sharifa uh, and the message that we can uh, learn from Dr. Sharifa's speech for students, especially, please uh, don't think too big or uh, there, uh, there's an overwhelming uh, goal, but uh, you can narrow down your goals and also uh, achieve it step by step uh, and set the, the goals, you know, start with the small goals uh, but uh, continuing doing that to achieve your uh, your goal. Okay, thank you again, Dr. Sharifa. Um, thank this you is, all. Yes, thank you for all of the participants for joining also Dr. Sharifa's session. This is um, the last uh, for Dr. Sharifa. Again, uh, thank you. And we can, uh, hopefully we can, uh, meet you in the different uh, webinar or events to collaborate with other. Uh, sure, I thanks. Uh, Thank I want you. to give you thanks all the organizing 
participants of uh, Erlanga as well as UITM and my beloved students and colleagues who joined in this session. Actually, it's really a great opportunity for me and you are inviting me as a speaker. It's really a great uh, pleasure for me. Thank you all. And I am also with Thank you. Sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sarifa. Thank you. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we can move to the next speaker. We have Dr. Muhammad Nazri, Muhammad Najib. He's a senior lecturer from the Faculty of Pharmacy, University Technology, Mara, Malaysia. Hello, Dr. Nazri, how are you? Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullah. Thank you for collaborating with us. Thank you. Um, okay, can you, please, can you see whenever my slide? you're ready. Yes, I can see your slides. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Um, uh, first and foremost, I would like to thank uh, the moderator, Jasnita, as well as uh, the organizer, Ms. Ranga, Fakulta Farmasi, uh, Bapak Andi, Jaban Shah, for inviting me today, uh, the Honorable Dr. Sharifa Sultana for her wonderful speech. And for myself, uh, this is actually more on sharing session uh, about surviving pharmacy, to be exact, and impact on the mental health as we, uh, the topic of today. Um, again, like I mentioned earlier, uh, I do not have, um, I, I don't want to focus specifically because I know in terms of statistics, in terms of uh, the disorder itself, in terms of overcoming the disorder, uh, we have journals, we have publications. In fact, Dr. Sultana also highlighted the statistic in terms of the world statistic uh, uh, about mental health. And it is a current issue. Uh, it is uh, very important. And uh, in my address to my students, especially the new intakes and those going into hospital training, I stress to them that uh, the matter should not be taken lightly. and if one is uh, uh, one is more uh, prone, uh, because ideally uh, a person do not have the same capability or same mental capacity uh, in terms of dealing with pressure uh, from one to another. So uh, my today's agenda is more on the um, UITM and what do we do in terms of. Um, method and um, uh, practices that we do in order to help our students uh, overcome uh, mental disorders. So um, I've been with UITM, uh, this is my 12th year, and I've seen progression um, in terms of cases uh, with our students. So I'm not I will not be touching on other faculties cases. I'm just going to focus on the pharmacy cases. And um, I think one of the question uh, touch on whether the pandemic plays a factor uh, in the student's mental uh, health capacity. And uh, for myself, for diploma, uh, for, for the program, for the faculty, I would say yes. Uh, I would say that uh, prior to 2019, between 2015 and 2019, uh, we see we have cases in the faculty where the students are uh, admitted. Uh, the students uh, do seek counselor uh, advice. Uh, however, the severity in terms of um, the uh, type of uh, mental health disorder is... Uh, the number, firstly, the number of cases is lower. Secondly, the severity is uh, less severe compared to those who have gone ODL, uh, online distance learning, and those who were like for the past two years were in school before going uh, into the university. Um, uh, and uh, I echoed Dr. Sultana's uh, statistic where we have the two main um, cases was uh, anxiety as well as depression. Those are the way, but uh, this one is can be overcome um, with proper counseling and medication, of course. Uh, for you, as a whole, uh, in a, a UITM setup, uh, we have 
basically uh, for pharmacy we have five layers uh, in order to uh, address the issue firstly uh, is uh, we call it uh, rakan counselor or counselor body so these students are they are actually students who uh, have uh, empathy and capacity to entertain their student uh, their their fellow colleagues so these are actually the uh, uh, our hand and feet on the ground yeah so these students are part of the counseling system so the counselor will appoint a rakan counselor and this student would uh, help their uh, if they detect or they they if they see uh, their friends struggling uh, with either anxiety or stress uh, and we ha- would have programs just to uh, cater uh, uh, for the hand and feet on the ground uh, and in UITM we have uh, appointed uh, academic advisors so when we say academic advisors is not necessarily uh, catering to the academic issues but also personal issue for example there's one case uh, where the student um, feel that uh, during lecture uh, people are focusing on him or her but in fact uh, it's just uh, it's not actually true uh, the, the the lecturer for example or the students are giving example of a broad but somehow she or he fe- felt that they are targeting him or her so uh, she feel uh, uh, stressful she feel um, uh, targeted so what would she do is that she would initially she wanted to confront the, the, the lecturer but due to the presence of uh, the, the academic advisor the academic advisor although again the name suggests uh, uh, um, a role in academic advising academically but they or uh, the academic advisor also diffuse the, the the problem talk to the student uh, find out the core problem and then uh, solve the issue on that level so it doesn't escalate um, of course um, the um, another role that we have in this uh, our setup is the my role which is the program coordinator so i coordinate uh, mainly uh, not only the students in the campus but also those who went uh, for uh, practical training and we have a long duration of that training and when the student jump from the university setup to the hostel setup the culture is totally different some of them um, can cope some of them uh, cannot cope and they tend to do uh, uh, fall into bad habit for example like uh, gossiping and whatnot because that's the culture in the, uh, in the hospital and some of them um, uh, uh, they initially have some uh, very, uh, minimal I would say problem uh, in terms of mental health but it escalates during the hostel training and when they are during they are in the hostel setup they are far from us so we have another layer like I said the myself as a program coordinator we also have uh, in the hostel themselves uh, a local preceptor local preceptor would uh, interact with the student uh, on a daily basis and they will report to myself if say there is any issues or not so there's there's one case that we have uh, last year which is very severe where the student uh, was suicidal uh, and then she, uh, he or she was warded uh, and then uh, uh, during medication, uh, so she was warded and then when we release, she doesn't have the capacity or he or she doesn't have the capacity to uh, fulfill or uh, finish up the hostel training, but rather she would stay in the uh, hostel and then she was unresponsive because she was on medication. She was unresponsive and was sleeping throughout the day and then the family was uh, trying to get to him or her, and then uh, they end up uh, calling the, uh, uh, we have police bantuan over here, uh, uh, sort of have to break into the, into, the, into the room in order to look at the student. But uh, essentially she is, she's okay, uh, he or she is okay, but she's actually on medication at that time. So there was, in terms of severity, during training when they are, far from us, far from the counselor, far from the academic advisor, far from uh, myself and the program coordinator, 
the problem may escalate. That's why we see. And uh, for those students, um, uh, coming back to the question in the chat box, where the students are, uh, where, where the situation students uh, are stuck in the uh, online setup, coming back to us, well, we saw uh, an, uh, another problem, a new problem. Uh, for example, uh, there's one case uh, in the in the hospital, sorry, in the faculty where uh, the students uh, have developed uh, addiction towards gaming. So this is new to us. We haven't seen uh, a gaming addiction so much so that um, so much so that it impacts the study. So uh, the the person would game all night, and when uh, when the time comes to come for classes, she wasn't able. He or she doesn't able to focus in class, so we end up uh, referring her to the counselor. And again, she was diagnosed with addiction to gaming. So this is new, and that is one of the impact I think uh, due to the fact that they are at home and is something that we are uh, unable to control. Right? We are unable to control. So I would say uh, uh, for students. Sometimes it's hard, it's hard for them to, to uh, because it's still a taboo in our community to talk about mental health openly. Yeah, I mean, uh, in terms of number of cases, I see that uh, probably before this is less open to talk about, but it's coming, it's coming along. Um, students are more open. I mean, they are, uh, because of the knowledge that they have and because of the, the situation now is slightly different but it's still a taboo in the community uh, in general. Uh, so I would say the ally would be their colleagues. Yeah? So that's why we have that uh, primary or first phase uh, of layer in order to detect. So, um, so this Rakan counselor is very important because they are the hands and feet on the ground and they will report to us if say, one is you know acting out of uh, in, uh, differently to the other. Uh, this is maybe an, an op unpopular opinion, but I would say love is also another thing that can affect uh, mental health. So it can be in a good way, it can be in a bad way. But uh, one would suggest that you know if it doesn't go as planned, uh, then yeah, uh, thing would go differently. And we see also. Uh, depression coming from you know breakups and whatnot so uh you know if students are in here you know threat carefully i'm not saying that you know don't fall in love because it is something is uncontrollable but do threat carefully uh <clears throat> back to another serious matter i think uh in uh especially in the hospital setup uh, we have um we have uh elder uh, uh somebody who is older than us, uh, especially those in the uh, already working in the hospital. And with these kids coming into the hospital, they are young. And uh, harassment can be in uh, the hospital or outside of the hospital workplace. But I see them, uh, I, hate, I heard cases of this, where uh, this harassment can lead to stress. Uh, because you are seeing the person over and over again on a daily basis, and they keep on doing the same thing. So that's why we have, again, a uh, counselor on call as well as local preceptor. Uh, if, in fact, she's not the one, or he or she's not the one doing, uh, is the perpetrator. So local preceptor would report to myself, and we would lodge uh, a formal report uh, if these things occur. But... Uh, Harassment can also be one of the uh, 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 factors uh, affecting mental health of our students. Um, I think this is the se uh, second to the last. Uh, uh, holiday, uh, taking gaps. I think Dr. Sultana also mentioned of things uh, that um, uh, can uh, diffuse or can help in uh, uh, countering uh, mental health. Because again, when, when uh, for, for our program, we have a lengthy uh, practical session, yeah? lengthy practice session, and we have heavy, uh, uh, in terms of materials 
for, for, for the student to consume. So I see that in, in fact, Penang is actually by the seaside. So I would encourage my, my students just to, you know, during weekends, uh, do take a break uh, and enjoy the scenery. Uh, I always ask them, uh, which part of Penang do you uh, explore uh, this weekend? Uh, because again, that two day gap, one day gap, and that outing with your colleagues can uh, can can diffuse the time bomb, so to say. You know, sometimes things build up throughout the week. You are stressed, uh, but just this two day can you know reset everything, and then here we go again for another week. Um, uh, so uh, I echo again what Dr. Sutana say that then in terms of academic stress, in terms of personal issue, uh, family issue is unavoidable as well. So these are the things uh, that uh, uh, impact our student and what I've seen in the faculty, in the program thus far, 12 years in the, in, in the system. So I think uh, uh, I just have uh, thank you to the committee again for having me today. And I would you know, open for the uh, students or uh, anybody who attend just to, you know, to, to ask us what, what we have here in UITM. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Dr. Uh, Nazri. What an interesting speech. And you also have uh, shared the evidence of the severity of mental health issues that might happen when it, they don't uh, identify nor treat properly. Mm -hmm. um, Dr. Nazri, if you don't mind, we will combine the discussion later on after the third speaker. Sure, sure. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, our third speaker is Dr. Andy Hermansyah. He is Assistant Professor in Social and Administrative Pharmacy, Faculty of Pharmacy, Universitas Erlangga. He is also the head of the Department of Pharmacy Practice. Dr. Andy, glad to see you this morning. Thank you very much. For getting yeah, thank you for initiating this event. And please, the screen is yours. Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a pleasure for me. I'm delighted to notice that uh, everyone's here are concerned with the mental health issue, particularly in the pharmacy students. Uh, allow me to share some uh, bit of presentations about the pharmacy students and then how it is uh, related to the mental health issues and our problems today. So can you see my slide clearly, Bukesita? Yes, we can see your uh, slides clearly. So uh, thank you very much first to Dr. Sarifa and also Dr. Nasri for their very insightful uh, presentation. And also I can learn uh, something from both universities that uh, we dealing with the same issue, particularly in mental health. So I would say that this presentation is a bit changed. I, I use title, are you happy doing your study? Because it is part of the issue. Happiness is our fundamental need, particularly for taking the study. This picture actually shows or resembles the fact that some students are really happy doing the pharmacy uh, program. But again, there are quite a few number of students who is also having issue with uh, mental health. In the statistic, it is said that 5% of pharmacy students are dealing with the mental health issues. So I think this is also quite problematic because if we don't resolve these problems, then it will eventually accumulate it and it becomes a bigger problem, a big, bigger problem in the end. So uh, according to the WHO, these are the four top lists of mental health issues, including anxiety in the feeling where people are almost feeling worried, they are afraid of something, they have a lot of sweat uh, for nothing, but this is part of the feeling anxious. 26 or 28% 20 of anxiety was increased after the COVID-19 pandemic. It is uh, going higher, particularly during the pandemic situation. The depression is also another issue because 5% of adults suffer from depression. They feeling depressed, they don't know what to do, they often hide themselves, they often feeling low and inferior. This is part of the depression state, in the, particularly in the mental health issue. And also bipolar is another issue that we need to, to, to tackle. Uh, because 40 million people experience bipolar disorder, 
meaning in some ways they can be very very uh, happy they can be much more euphoria in one state but on the other state they will have a feeling depressed feeling low feeling something that their self is use is useless so there is a huge dramatic situation between one state and another state of in terms of bipolar disorder and schizophrenia was is one of the worst one and and we need to deal also with this one because in one in every 300 people living with psychotic problems so basically i'm a pharmacist and but uh, and also uh, an academic but during our uh, life working here in with salanga for about almost uh, 15 years we experience a number of issues including related uh, mental related health issues that is experienced by the students i have supervised more than uh, five or six phd students and also bump a book of uh, graduate master degree program and also undergraduate uh, students so we i could see that they have a very different situation one in another and also it is quite individual however if we take all these problems in together then the problem actually is multiple it is uh, multifactorial it is a lot of issues that may combine into the state of uh, mental health conditions so particularly when people are in the pharmacy they are in a really high demand for great with in excellence way they have also experienced problems with practicing practicum doing practice doing laboratory job etc and also they have to report all the progress every time they they completing their study so this is part of the cycle within uh, our curriculum not only in indonesia but also in many countries as well uh, that kind of complexity if we cannot handle uh, by ourselves it might be a problem this is getting worse uh, this is getting worse when you have another issues outside the campus for example you have individual problems with your friends you have a problems with your family etc this is kind of uh, adding together all the problems into one bowl so it's really make you suffer now in our experience uh, as i noted dr nasri and also dr sur sarifa also mentioned this type of problems we have at least four major problems related to the mental health issue in many of our supervised students first is the family problems so it is uh, it is manifested in many ways for example if you are from a broken home family then the students will also have a, will be struggling not only to complete his start his or her study but also in terms of uh, get along in life because uh, you know family does fundamental for most of us including for the pharmacy students and any different any shakes any what is called uh, changes to the family issues or to to the family life it may have a big a devastating impact to individuals another problem is financial during our pandemic there are a number of students coming to me that they said we had uh, problems with economic my father was selling uh, something in the sport, was selling in the school they opening like food stall in the school but the school was closed so it is also affecting our uh, economic life my father was just uh, fired from home, from work, their work and then now is push and forced to work at home so it is kind of the financial issues that experienced by the students love and relationship problem yes i agree to this issue as well dr nasri because in our experience uh, there are some students who wish to marry particularly this one in under in graduate students in master program who wish to marry because uh, he thought it would be better to marry but again there is a conflict between the parents and also him the parents asked him to continue the study but him he asked for marry first and then it affects how it uh, it really the relationship during the study and also it affects the love relationship between with, with her girlfriend another issue there is also student who were run away by uh, 
her boyfriend and it also affect his uh, her study as well so uh, she said she said to me i was kidnapped by my my boyfriend and were taken away from my family so it's another issue in terms of love relationship addiction is another problem that also we are currently facing particularly with the gaming one and also watching movies too often because uh, as i said I, every time i started my my lesson i often ask what time did you sleep last night and they said i often sleep uh, more than 1 am in the morning or 2 am or at least uh, the, the fastest one is 11 pm and i said what did you do oh, i often play game and also watching a, a korean movie or something like that so it's really affecting when we come to, to the class they feel soaky and also very very tired so it's a it's another issue i've i've i ever found students also during my class they uh, he, she played uh, online games and i noticed here and i said why did you play this one what happens with your study etc and then i evidently found out that she also has issue with uh, with getting along with other friends and also his, her family as well so it is part of the addiction which later forcing the students into procrastination making them uh, feel I'm unable to complete this work because I don't have time. I'm unable to complete this work because I'm not feeling good, etc. So it is part of the procrastination at the end of the at the end of the day. So uh, what is our coping mechanism and our strategy? Well, first thing, first first thing first, we need to have purpose in life, and that's why having faith and religion, and be religious and also be have a supportive religious side is kind of a, a thing that essential to life. Thinking of the world today and the hereafter tomorrow is also part of the uh, things that we can make our uh, self, uh, what is called alleviating all those mental health issues. Having purpose in life is quite fundamental for most of us and that's why it is part of the essential strategy to cope with the mental health issue. Uh, seeing yourself as price, uh, uh, seeing yourself, seeing yourself as a very important person, or you have uh, goals in your life, attitude about yourself is also important. Is also uh, fundamental because if you don't, uh, what is called, uh, evaluate, if you don't make yourself worthy, then nobody else. This is also important for you. Uh, having controls over your life. Base, fulfillment of basic need is also uh, a great things that we need to be concerned because most of the things, uh, uh, mental health issues often related with the lack or poor fulfillment of basic needs. That's why uh, those who are in financial problems, they might fall into the mental health and also well-being issue. So these are some of our strategies to deal, including how to improve the relationship with others and engage with others, including in times of talk, discussion, and etc. We also have a this called counseling and psychological service, as usual in many universities. But again, if you are a supervisor and you have students for this one, I think the best thing is the relationship between the supervisor and the students to see what we can deal, what we can resolve together, and what we can prevent from the mental health issues. So I think it's all my talk, uh, Kestita, and thank you very much uh, for uh, allowing me to share this idea. Thank you, Dr. Andy, for raising the awareness of mental health issues um, that happen globally, yeah? uh, including the types, the possible causes, and also some of the strategies to coping with uh, those mental health issues. I shall invite Dr. Nazri to join again with us. We will have a short discussion session for highlighting and uh, maybe emphasizing some important things from your speech. Uh, and I invite uh, participants to uh, bring questions. Oh, I already yeah, see question. two yeah, questions from the chat box. Mm -hmm. First is from uh, Bu Anila. For Dr. Nazri, 
uh, this is related to the toxic social environment um, yeah. that Dr. Nazri has uh, shared with us um, today. So how Dr. Nazri, how to increase students' resilience, especially to fight the toxic social environment? Yeah, Please, thank, Dr. Nazri. Yeah, thank you, uh, Ibu Anila, for the question. Uh, I think uh, uh, Bapa Andi has helped me answer the question with second last slide, I think, coping mechanism. So maybe I just add on to that. So aside from, you know, having faith, uh, good relationship with others and whatnot. So what I see is that uh, for myself, I like to have mini goals and main goals. So it's, it's hard to focus uh, sometimes if you have many distraction. So when you have mini goals and you have your main goal and you have your mini goals to get there, uh, it would help, you know, uh, eliminate distraction. And then uh, I think uh, uh, Bapa Ali also mentioned about having control in one life. Uh, so for me, I would have I would suggest uh, in order to gain cope for the um, toxic environment, you would have your own me time. So I for myself, I I see I do golf a lot <laughs> sometimes. Uh, so golfing helped me uh, have my own me time as well as release any tension that I have during my studies as well as during work. So because when you're hitting that ball and it, it flies off, it really releases the tension. So uh, again, I think in, uh, I think Pani also mentioned about engagement. Yes, talk to someone. Uh, you when um, you re, when it's, uh, the the pressure is released, you are, even in fact in the, the person just listen, especially for counselor. Mostly, most of the time they just listen. So listening would help uh, diffuse uh, the issue. I keep on, I keep on using the word diffuse because I always see it as a time bomb. Because you cope, you cope, you cope until a certain point, and when uh, you do not engage it properly, then it blows up. So that's why I like to use the word diffuse. Yes, I agree to the word yeah, diffuse yeah. because it's like a time bomb. We did, we did. Yes, you are correct, that All right. Yes. So I think that that's the three main additional apart from. The, uh, the other things that uh, Bapak Andi has mentioned in his second to last slide. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Dr. Nazri. And especially you mentioned about uh, pharmacy students' experience during an internship, yeah? Mm -hmm. And all of that, I think uh, we, uh, our students here also are facing that mm -hmm. problems as well because, yeah, some cultural issues. Um, I invite other questions from uh, the participants. Is there any other that maybe some uh, yes. of the participants want to directly uh, yeah, ask? Well, there's another question in the chat box. Yeah, Bapak Agung. Okay. Yeah, Bapa Agung. Perhaps Bapak Agung can also ask questions directly if he, if he likes. Yeah, uh, Bapak uh, Pak Agung, are you with us? Uh, let me uh, no. try to answer the questions here. Yeah. So uh, with respect to pandemic situation, well, everyone is shocked. Not only the students, but also the lecturer, everyone, every type of persons uh, during the pandemic was shocked. Uh, meaning uh, in these things that we are together, we are experiencing the same burden, we are the experiencing the same issues, the same problems, so we are not alone. And this is quite a simple thing to consider, because if you are not alone and a lot of people experiencing the same way, then we are dealing with the same issues and we are starting from the baseline. So this is good to see uh, the other thing, except we, we often see it as a problem, but we never see it as an opportunity. We need to see it as this is other people. Uh, we, we need to see it that in the in the end of the day, there is always a, a way out after a problem. There is always a clear situation after uh, apa, badai, but after, after rainy, after, after storm, after, after the storm, <laughs> after rainy days. So yeah, uh, I think students also experience the same problems, uh, different mentality, of course, after the pandemic because they used to. Uh, get along with other students, but nowadays they get along with the friends virtually. So whenever they uh, have an offline class or face-to-face -face class or in-person learning, sometimes they also feel it. I mean, there are not two types of students. They are really waited to see their friends. This one is very like extrovert persons. 
and then when they see have when they have the opportunities to go offline they will talk every time whenever they see the other fans the other things are students who are like to work alone or like to work uh, virtually this is also part of the problem because when they are in the offline situations they feel kind of uh, difficult to uh, maintain the relationship with others and then they're quite shocked that noticing that oh so you are now like so you are like this one now you are changing <laughs> now etc so it's a it's it's everyone issue actually not only for the students so the transition is the key to the transition is you have to be aware that the pandemic um, although it's not over but the, there is always uh, wise things uh, in every time in every situation and you have to understand that there is always solution to every problem and during the pandemic yes we are under pressure but again we need to learn that this is perhaps the learning that we have to take where the, the, there is a uh, insight that we can uh, take from the pandemic situation in terms of our uh, transition also uh, i need to uh, address that every student is responsible for their study this is this is part of your commitment to study. It is not part of uh, my commitment to study as a lecturer. I'm a lecturer all helping you to complete the study. You as a student who are, uh, hold the highest supreme responsibility for this study. So that's why during your commitment, within the commitment, there is also hope and expectation from your parents, from other people that you love. This is the thing that you have to be aware of. Otherwise, you may not find the goal of completing your study. I believe in the philosophy that Dr. Nasri uh, hold also. There is a many goals, the short one, the short term goals, the things that you would like to uh, achieve most at this moment, but also there is some main goals in your life. And if you remember your parents that put you in the school or those who are uh, believing you that you can undertake this study, uh, then it is the concept of life that you need to accomplish. So I think it's uh, it's a way to do the transition to get get it done. Yes, I agree with uh, uh, Pak Andi and also uh, Pak Nasri, Dr. Nasri, uh, and all because we all are academics. So every day we face, we interact with students. So hopefully. Uh, we know that we can identify like when there is uh, some uh, some low performance or maybe unusual habits from our students. Uh, it could be because of the mental health issues and we can uh, further suggest the students, maybe uh, call the students and also uh, talk to them and yeah, see what uh, we can do to help them. You are correct. You are correct. I think we are clear on that page because talking, discussion is a is a is a friendly way to resolve the problem. Yeah, but Nasri, yeah. So it's a is very useful as well. Just talk to your supervisor for any issues if you have. I think. Yes, and yeah, keeping uh, yourself doesn't doesn't work. <laughs> right, right, right. And uh, the communication mode now is like very easy. Um, maybe myself, I have uh, also a students, um, and I uh, I can communicate with them uh, either in the WhatsApp. You know, I like open uh, open up the, uh, any any opportunities for them. Maybe they want to, yeah, just drop some. I don't know, maybe curhat curhat. Yes. <laughs> uh, from the students. Uh, are welcome so it is important for academics to uh, be open for their students as well yeah yeah so the, the philosophy is if you want to resolve other or helping others then you have to resolve uh, any problems in your own self first because it is uh, i mean you need to take care of yourself as well before or right. before caring others Perhaps this is, I think, uh, one of the issues. But again, caring is not always de depending on ourselves, actually. So whenever you want to care others, just care others. Yes, yes. and find your stress reliever, like Dr. Nazri. Oh, yeah. 
the thing uh, hobbies. He likes school. He likes school. <laughs> I like my family, so I like <laughs> I like get along with family with my kids. Get that's along a, with that's, family. That's part so, of the resolution. <laughs> I think it's another yes. thing. Shopping helps me as well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We go shopping But a lot. Not too much, Dr. Nazri. Yeah. Shopping. <laughs> it's interesting. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um. Any other uh, question maybe for participant? I want to invite for the last session for this uh, first sharing session. If there's no more question, uh, shall we end this um, discussion? Uh, yes. Dr. Andy, Dr. Yes. Nazri. And Thank maybe I much. want to uh, invite uh, Dr. Nazri for a last message maybe okay. for the students especially. Yeah. Uh, first and foremost, uh, thank you all students. Uh, if you are joining us from Daffodil, from uh, UniAir, as well as UITM, thank you for joining us today. I hope uh, in the break session, do talk, do express yourself, uh, because I'm sure uh, the moderators are capable uh, enough to uh, entertain uh, any issues that you have. So uh, I, I'm looking forward to the next session, and I hope you would Uh, open up as well. Uh, maybe uh, this is the starting point because maybe you're being uh, the, the time the time bomb is ticking. But maybe today is the way we diffuse it. Yes, hopefully. Hopefully. Uh, thank you, Dr. Nasri and Dr. Andy. Thank you very much. I can agree more with Dr. Nasri, so it's uh, I go with Dr. Nasri. Okay. All right. I think our first session has been finished. And uh, thank you again for Dr. Nazri and Dr. Andy for bringing us such uh, really, really uh, good uh, awareness for mental health issues. So for students, after this, we will have a um, sharing session that will be facilitated by tutors. Uh, and it will be conducted in the breakout rooms. So don't be worried that this is gonna be shared like Um, everybody know your problems. Uh, this is uh, like a top secret. Yes. So <laughs> yes, so the committee will uh, turn off the record uh, setting. Please for the committee to turn off the record setting. Okay. Uh, for this session, uh, the committee will open several rooms. And uh, you as the participants can join by yourself. You can choose to enter the room for sharing session. The sharing session will be 30 minutes in duration. You can uh, share your stories, um, problems, uh, anything related to the mental health issues or yeah, whatever you face right now. Um, and also you can listen to other participants' experience Uh, strategy 